Um, okay. Let's dive right into uh, how Starfield is coming to PlayStation? Uh, I mean, it's not just Starfield. Well, we'll start with Starfield. Yeah, I don't know how we want to approach this. I think we should go in order. Okay. of like events and i think i think you have it and i might in, have moved i moved things around so i don't know well, no, you actually this it was starfield and then indiana jones and then gears of war okay so you actually put it but in also the right did order. we talk about hi-fi rush last week because there's hi-fi rush was the first one we talked about it a while ago hi-fi rush hi-fi coming. rush yes that was a, a data mine leak yes um there are uh shirts in the game yes that were people leaked. found the shirts now yeah um one that that, that seem to allude to it coming to switch and playstation yes yeah yeah um that's the most recent thing about hi-fi rush we did talk about hi-fi rush a couple weeks back okay uh possibly coming so hi-fi rush is the first of these but now this week we got the thing is like hi-fi rush was like a smaller title yeah i would have expected it was like a a b-tier title yeah now the rumors are like the a-tier stuff like the big triple a stuff right like the premium exclusive. The reason why you would buy an Xbox. Right. You're not going to buy an Xbox for Hi-Fi Rush. You're going to buy an Xbox for a Starfield, for an Indiana Jones, for a Gears of War. Right. But now... Not a Gears of War. Just just saying. Well, maybe in the three, <laughs> maybe in the 360 era, it would have been for a Gears of War. Okay. But now, uh, as first reported by Xbox era... For many weeks now, rumors have been rumors have persisted regarding Microsoft's intention to release a number of first-party titles, namely Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves, that was the other one, on rival platforms. According to our sources, who have asked to remain anonymous because they are not authorized to talk about company plans, the list of games also includes Bethesda's Starfield. Starfield was released back in August of 2023 to fairly positive reception despite the narrative that now exists online and was the biggest Bethesda game launch of all time, surpassing 6 million players within a week of release that's crazy now it looks as though microsoft are planning on bringing bethesda's newest rpg universe to an entirely new platform the playstation 5 Mm. according to sources we understand that currently microsoft are planning a launch for starfield on the ps5 post the release of the already announced shattered space expansion for xbox and pc which is on target to arrive some point later this year We've also been informed that Microsoft has made additional investment in PlayStation 5 dev kits to support ongoing development efforts, adding further fuel to the fire. As the already existing rumors have suggested, the idea of bringing first-party titles to competing console platforms marks a massive change in strategy for Microsoft. And from what this writer understands, it's, uh, it's not been a fierce internal debate on this direction. Releasing Starfield on PlayStation 5 contradicts the original statement around the exclusivity made by President Sarah Bond during the Xbox and Bethesda Game Studios Summer Showcase in 2021. According to our sources, leadership at Microsoft have rep- uh, reportedly debated the various pros and cons of releasing more of their exclusive software elsewhere. And internally, not everyone is necessarily happy with the decision, but recouping the potential money left on the table by releasing elsewhere has arguably won out. According to sources, Hi-Fi, Rush, Hi-Fi Rush's release on rival platforms is tentatively planned for Q1 this year, and um, it's been advised uh, to expect Microsoft to make more make more public announcements on this new strategy this month. So they said, being pros and cons of releasing it on others, releasing their software elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, recouping the potential money left on the table. Is it because they aren't selling a lot of uh, consoles? Is that what they're referring yeah, to? Yeah, probably. I mean, so yeah, they sold 6 million units, but they sold 6 million units between Xbox and PC. This mm-hmm. is a Bethesda title. It's a Todd Howard Bethesda title specifically. That could have sold uh, 10 million units, 20 million units, had it been released on other systems like PlayStation, which has a factually a bigger install base. You know, I saw a chart that was released a few days ago that was a system sales across the globe in different regions, uh, which ones are on top. Yeah. And I saw a lot of Xbox and Steam Deck. And that surprised me because they don't sell that much. (laughs) Yeah. But I was wondering maybe if that statistic was skewed maybe they took out the switch because if they had the switch and then yeah. that would be the whole globe would be the switch yeah maybe they took out the playstation 5 because otherwise it would just be the switch and the playstation right. 5 
Uh, so I don't know what I was looking at, to be honest. But right. I was surprised to see a lot of Xbox Series S. Yeah. Because I think that's just a cheap entryway into getting a modern yeah. console these days. And I was surprised to see a lot of Steam Deck. Um, I'm not surprised that Microsoft would want to put their uh, stuff on other consoles. Right. Uh, it seems like that's just the way they've been going about things. There was a controversy when Starfield was coming out that it was originally being developed for PlayStation. Right. And then it was in development before Microsoft acquired Bethesda. Right. And once Microsoft did, you know, this is before they made the official announcement. Mm -hmm. Once Microsoft acquired Bethesda, they basically started saying, okay, um, aside from, you know, Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo and like one or two other games, all Bethesda games going forward are going to be Xbox exclusive. Right. That includes the next game that got revealed to possibly oh, go into shit. PlayStation. Bethesda's upcoming Indiana Jones is also tentatively set to launch on Sony's PlayStation 5 console. We got our first glimpse of Indiana Jones in the Great Circle during Microsoft's uh, Xbox Developer Direct event last month, where it was announced for PC and Xbox. A source familiar with Microsoft's plan tells The Verge that Bethesda is also considering bringing the Great Circle to PlayStation 5. A new multi-platform approach for certain Xbox games is emerging inside Microsoft, we're told, with the company weighing up its titles with uh will remain well sorry, uh with the company weighing up which titles will remain exclusive and others that will appear on Switch or PS5 in the future. Indiana Jones appears to be part of a new wave of multi-platform games. While Bethesda will launch its Indiana Jones game first as an Xbox exclusive, uh it's currently set to have a rather short period of exclusivity. Uh, a release for PlayStation 5 is being considered for some months later with Bethesda tentatively targeting a December 2024 release wow. for the Xbox and PC versions. Exact timing and platform availability for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle could change, particularly as Microsoft's new multi-platform approach for Xbox games hasn't been finalized. Microsoft has been evaluating bringing certain games to PS5 and Switch. Uh, sea of Thieves and Hi-Fi Rush are both reportedly been under cross-platform consideration. Um, and you can see below where the shirts we were talking about before, um, they're color-coded for the specific consoles. Yeah, and then the Rock Out Anywhere seems to suggest that yeah. it's uh, uh, the Switch because it's portable. Yeah. Um, th this could. There's a lot of different ways they could go about this. Um, mm -hmm. It could be a timed exclusivity thing going forward, like how PlayStation does uh, PC games. <clears throat> they always release PC games later. They, they'll yeah. release their stuff on PlayStation consoles exclusively, and then like a year yeah. later usually, or sometimes it's six months, but usually it's a year. Usually it's a year. Yeah. They will release the mm -hmm. game for PC. Yeah. Uh, Xbox could do a similar thing, but the way that this is all, all this news is coming out so fast, it seems like this might just be the way things are going forward yeah i think this has been you know something that they've been considering a long time yeah i think they they see the writing on the wall that so, like something like uh indiana jones will take a while because they they didn't have these plans initially and they've been developing well, it for their own uh, consoles as the article says last year uh it was learned during the ftc versus microsoft case that indiana jones and the great circle was originally planned for multiple consoles Pete Hines, Bethesda's former head of global publishing, testified that Disney had a contract for multiple consoles and that the deal was amended to be an Xbox console exclusive after the Microsoft acquisition. Oh, so Hines put Hines put the change down to potential delays in bringing the game to multiple consoles, adding that you're dealing with a licensor who's going to have a ton of feedback on what you're making, adding a lot of time to your schedule. So this was already a Bethesda game before Microsoft acquired yes. them. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Uh, or before that, it was even in talks of happening. Yeah. Um, interesting. But also, like Starfield, we know that that was being worked on for PlayStation, then it was not being worked on for PlayStation yeah. anymore. And now all of a sudden, it's being worked on for PlayStation again. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take time for some of the games that are currently in development to drop yeah. for other consoles. But something like Hi Fi Rush, I'd imagine that that's just, a, that just first of all, it's a much smaller game. It'd yeah. be easier to port that to other stuff. And that just seems like it would be a perfect game for other platforms. Right. Specifically the Switch. Yeah. Um, possibly. Now, like, uh, Starfield and Indiana Jones, those are Bethesda games. They were in development for PlayStation before Microsoft uh, purchased them. It would make sense for those to go multi-platform. Mm -hmm. I think the shocking thing is the next article, oh. which is Gears of War. Yes. 
Uh, Microsoft is reportedly considering bringing Gears of War, the franchise, to PlayStation. That's according to Giant Bomb's Jeff Grubb, who was elaborating on recent claims that Microsoft is working on a new initiative to release more Xbox exclusives uh, on other platforms. Over the weekend, it was claimed that Starfield and Indiana Jones will be coming to PlayStation 5, as well as Hi-Fi Russian Sea of Thieves. Um, the other one that I've heard that's definitely under consideration, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it's in talks, is Gears of War, Grubb said on Monday. Gears of War is being considered for this. Um, Grubb also stated that Microsoft was at one point planning to publicly explain its new initiative at the end of February, but that given the mounting speculation, there's a chance that an official announcement will be brought forward. Uh, the other thing I can corroborate is a rumor that there will be something at the end of February uh, when we're going when they're going to explain this change. That is something they definitely uh, were talking about. According to Microsoft, Gears of War has sold 22 million units and grossed over a billion dollars when the company acquired the franchise from Epic Games in 2014. Since buying the IP, Xbox uh, has released two mainline series, two mainline entries in the form of 2016's Gears 4 and 2019 Gears 5, both of which were developed by the Coalition, as well as Gears of War Ultimate Edition and the turn-based tactics spinoff Gears Tactics. Uh, the Coalition said in 2021 that it's preparing to transition to next-gen development using Unreal 5, uh, but that but that it wasn't planning to announce any new games in the near future. Grubb also claimed last February that the Coalition has shifted its full attention to the next entry in the Gears of War series after two other games in development at the studio were canceled. Um, I mean, Gears of War is synonymous with being an Xbox title. Yeah. But I, I feel like the whole launch around Starfield made it clear that that was also you know uh, a, a microsoft ip this is yeah. now one of their flagship games yes and gears we haven't really heard much about in the past couple of years you know yeah gears 5 like this 2019 so it's been a while since a gears game yeah has come out um and i don't remember there being a lot of hype around gears 5 i think there was in the initially but then like it died off pretty okay. quickly um yeah gears does not have the staying power that it once did like during the 360 era yeah um but still like i would say gears of war is like their number two franchise right under halo like that is like that's as synonymous with xbox as that's not else. saying too much <laughs> i mean they got forza they got fable i mean like they haven't really done anything with fable mm -hmm. fables fables now probably like the number six franchise at this point mm -hmm. but like you know this is, this is probably a bad comparison but like halo and gears it's like mario and zelda yeah, you know. no, Gears is up there uh with uh like name recognition and stuff, but yeah. but uh I just don't see Gears as that big of a deal to Xbox. Even even though it is. It, it is a big deal. Right. It's just not I just don't ha hold Gears in such high regard as I do some of the other Xbox right. stuff like Forza. Yeah. And like now Starfield. Yeah. Um but it is a kind of a huge deal for them to let go of Gears and put it on something else. Yeah. It would be similar to Halo. Yeah. And it is possible that we end up seeing yeah, Halo. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, there hasn't been any reporting on it, but there has been like a lot of speculation online that we could see Halo Infinite on PlayStation, mm -hmm. which I don't think they would do. I think Halo is too precious to them. I don't know. You, don't, you think there's a possibility... I think there's a possibility we get the Master Chief Collection on other platforms. Okay. I think it would take some sort of Game Pass situation on other platforms. Yeah. Or some sort of, you know, like Xbox app on the Switch or something. Yeah. You know, like, like, a, like a Game Pass streaming thing on the Switch or yeah. something like that to be able to play your Halo games. Mm-hmm. Or we'll have to see what happens with the next Halo game because yeah. the last Halo game people were not very happy with. No. So the next one's got to be something weird and wacky and different and there, there's got to be some sort of different business model for that. Yeah. So they might end up releasing it for other platforms. All that said, Phil Spencer did respond on February 5th. He said, we are listening and we hear you. We've been planning a business update event for next week where we look forward to sharing more details with you about our vision for the future of Xbox. Stay tuned. Yeah, usually they would just straight up say like, like no, we're committed to Xbox yeah. or whatever. Or but, they wouldn't say anything. Or they wouldn't say anything. And, and here they're like, no, we've got something for you. Yeah. So, so they, they, to me, that is, they're not shutting down the rumors and they're pretty much uh, saying we will address it. So yeah. stay tuned. So that that's... Way different than the normal corporate speak we usually hear about. Um, 
I do also, a lot of this is being talked about for PlayStation, uh, except for High Fire Rush, which is what they should say pretty much said yeah. with Switch. Um, look, Starfield would be almost impossible to put on the Switch. Oh, but yeah. a Switch 2, no. Yeah. Because uh, Starfield, right out the gate, is working on all these other PC handhelds. Yeah. I don't see why they couldn't have that stuff working for a next generation uh, Switch. Yeah, I don't know how powerful this next generation Switch is going to be. It's gonna yeah. definitely going to be more powerful than the one that we have now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that a game that is developed for PC, like Starfield is, has the potential to run uh, just fine on the next generation Switch. It'll probably have shitty textures yeah. and be 30 frames per second, but it'll run and, and you'll be able to play your game i think there's also the possibility that like you know the switch 2 is just powerful enough to get game pass cloud running yeah so that they can you know because by the next generation of switch maybe they'll have game pass up to the point where they can have more games streaming from the cloud so you can do it on your phone or on your switch yeah i'm very curious how that would work like i i do want microsoft stuff on other platforms and I would love Game Pass on other platforms. I don't know how much PlayStation or Nintendo would like to have Game Pass on their platforms. Like, yeah. if I if you put Starfield on the Switch, but you have to have a Game Pass subscription in order to play it, Nintendo isn't seeing any money from that. Yeah. So there's got to be some sort of deal going on there. Maybe if there's a certain amount of downloads from Switch platform, they, they give yeah. Nintendo some money or something. Same thing with PlayStation. Like, if I can log into my uh, Game Pass account on PlayStation, why would I buy the game on PlayStation? Yeah. I could just play it through Game Pass. Something like that would be really cool to see, but probably won't happen. So, I don't know how this will work. Maybe you will probably have to buy the software outright on these other platforms. Yeah. Especially because, uh, I mean, Nintendo has their own sort of online system, but it's a lot different than Microsoft's and Sony's. Yeah. Sony has one that is very similar to Game Pass, so they're mm -hmm. not going to want to have Game Pass on, yeah. on their platform. That's going to be a little different. Also, uh, Microsoft does not have a handheld. No. They're using uh, the ROG Ally and the, and the Steam Deck and stuff. Well, actually, just really just the PC handheld. Yeah. The Windows stuff. They're and, using uh, the Logitech. The Logitech, yeah. yeah. The, the Android-based uh, Game Pass machine. Yeah. They're using those as their flagship handhelds because you could mm -hmm. just use their service through those. Um, PlayStation uh has the portal now. Yes, and you it, actually, I was gonna, I was about to say you, it it would be better with their subscription service, but actually no. Yeah, because you can't play your games off <laughs> yeah. of the cloud. I forgot, I forgot exactly how fucking terrible that thing was. Mm -hmm. Um, but the Switch is the Switch; it's a handheld. So, yeah. uh, Microsoft offloading their stuff onto something like a switch would make a lot of sense mm -hmm. uh because they don't have their own little handheld they have other ancillary little handhelds yeah uh playstation might want to just enter the handheld market but i guess we'll talk about that uh later yeah yeah so yeah brave new worlds we're entering into um i'm for it i mean i like xbox a lot and i like uh the services that they have yeah um i rarely ever utilize their hardware uh, i use an xbox controller because yeah. it's great uh but i play it on pc and stuff i think this really does open the question though what does this mean for not microsoft game studios because they'll be fine they'll just release their games on their systems but what does this mean for the xbox console and the xbox brand itself because we know that exclusives sell ga sell consoles, mm -hmm. and now here's Microsoft saying that you it doesn't matter. You can get our exclusives anywhere. So, does this mean we're seeing the end of the Xbox console? Is there a point to owning an Xbox console when they're going to start putting their exclusives elsewhere? So, so they had that leak a few months ago where we saw what the next xbox is going to look like and it looked like a streaming uh, yeah or, or sort of like you know like yeah streaming only streaming only box or something yeah um and now we're seeing stores like shrink their xbox yeah a uh, section or we where, shouldn't say streaming only we should say uh, uh digital discless. download yeah discless, discless. Yeah, yeah yeah um and that's fine um 
So I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe, I, I mean, it would make sense for them to double down on their service because that's working out yeah. for them um, and capitalize on other platforms that are selling systems really well. Um, I don't know. I, I also think that these uh, big uh, game companies are, uh, they're thinking about the console life cycle a lot differently than they used to. Yeah. Um, in the last generation, we saw the pro models and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, we even heard Nintendo talking about how uh, usually they see a dip in sales towards the end of the life cycle. Yeah. And then a slow ramp up again when the next console comes out. Mm -hmm. But they're thinking of like trickling it out and like like having like a little in between to like trickle things between the two consoles. So yeah. there's a nice steady uh, pass over. Uh, and I think that that might be the future of the consoles. You might end up getting games that work across platform. There's just other features on the console that yeah. will make it more enticing for people to buy. So I don't know what the next Xbox console might be. It might, it might just be something that would be cool to have, but you can play your games wherever you want. I think there's something to be said about like if you invested in Xbox dating back to the 360 era. Then like your digital library is there, your gamer tag is already there. The the friends that you made that are still on Xbox are still there. Mm -hmm. But I think we saw with the jump from 360 to Xbox One and PS3 to PS4 that didn't matter because Sony put out a better product with better services and people jumped ship. And then because the PS4 era and the Xbox One era was the one to really solidify, you know, having an account system where you you can take your things with you. And Phil Spencer even said, we lost that generation. That was the worst generation to lose. And it's subsequently now we're losing this generation because of it. Mm -hmm. So like, they know they're in last place. They know that their division is not as strong as Nintendo's or Sony's is. So I understand the need to like do something in order to make the Xbox brand or the Microsoft Game Studio brand survive it's just a question of now what does this mean for the box that you plug into your tv you know how long are they going to support that before they just go all in on play it everywhere it, it seems I, I don't know i don't know how much they're losing when they put effort into a physical box yeah you know it's it seems like i mean they lose they lose money on every console they sell yeah like, but i mean the benefit would be, oh, I have an Xbox, so I might as well get things on Xbox. You know, yeah. um, that's what every big company is hoping for when they sell a console. Yeah. But in this case, they might just be like, hey, get it. Let's put our things out on as many things as possible. If we make the sale, we make the sale. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But also, here's a fun little thing for special Xbox fans if they want their own Xbox console they can uh -huh. get this little cylinder thing that's not yeah. a box anymore we don't know we're, we're done with boxes we're yeah. only cylinders we're, we're tubes we're tubes the x tube the x tube don't we're, don't we're go to that, that website that, <laughs> i was gonna say next week when phil spencer makes this announcement he's gonna be like no more box only tubes <laughs> i just realized now that i uh posted the wrong link on on twitch on, on twitter oopsies anyway uh, yeah. So we've known for a while that Microsoft does not care about uh, uh console sales anymore. They've pretty much given up on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's still weird to see them double down. Yeah, it it be weird. It's weird to see any consoles because the last time this happened, when a console maker said they're going to put their games on uh, multi platforms, was Sega, <laughs> and they don't make consoles anymore. <laughs> No, I, I so I don't think Microsoft can. I don't think that can happen to Microsoft because it's Microsoft, right? They they they're they're a software company. They they already have. They're one of the biggest companies in the world, but also they just spent seventy billion dollars on one of the biggest right. publishers in the well, world. Well, they can put those games anywhere. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and they'd be fine. Like if 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 they stopped making hardware tomorrow. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen at Microsoft. You know, if if making hardware no longer makes business sense to them, mm -hmm. then I can totally see them pulling out and just releasing their games on other platforms. You know, maybe they will still cuz like, you know, Microsoft also makes computers, but They do? Yeah. You don't, you know, most people don't buy a Microsoft computer. They'll buy an Asus computer, a Dell computer, 
of so they'll build their own. Yeah, but, but but they make money off of that. Yeah, you know. So and they would make money off of selling their games elsewhere. Yeah. But they would also still make an Xbox, so you can play games on there. Yeah, or not, or not, or maybe they won't. Yeah, they could also double down on uh, Steam. They could put yeah. right there's they have an official way to put Game Pass on Steam. It is a nightmare. Yeah. So they should just release Game Pass for Steam. There's a little app that's like, here, go here, and it yeah. does everything for you, and you'll be able to stream. I don't think uh, Valve would even care. No, Valve wouldn't care. Valve doesn't care at all. No. All right. All right, so I guess we'll have to see next week. I'm very excited to see yeah. what they're... That it's going to be whatever... It's potential that they announce something that is going to change a lot of what we think about yeah. the, the, the console wars. It's oh, gonna yeah. It's going to be very strange next week. Um, I just hope... Two things. One, I hope that it is on Monday or early Tuesday so we can talk about it on the yes. show yes. and not be late to the party. And two, I hope it's something so spectacular that all the people who are going crazy right now, like lighting their Xboxes on fire because they feel betrayed, go even crazier. Because, <laughs> oh my God, I look, I don't want to tell you people to touch grass, but like, please go outside and touch grass. It just, the reaction to this has been insane. We've been dealing with the console wars since the console wars were a thing. We, well, we were part of the real console wars between yeah. Sega and Nintendo. That was a console war. Yeah. Since then, it's just been like, we were on the front lines we of were. that console war. But like, honestly, since like the PS2, GameCube, original Xbox era, they've all been the same. Like pretty much all the systems have been the same. The only difference were the exclusives. Yeah. And even then, like there were comparable experiences on other systems. I, I have my preferences. So yeah. like I will yeah. like one over the other. Mm -hmm. But if one of them gets a game that the other one doesn't, I'm not going to. Well, or I think the better way to look at it is if my favorite console has a game and then all of a sudden that game comes out for a different console. I'm not like betrayed. Yeah. It's good that that game is now being able to be enjoyed by exactly. other people. Yeah. When Roller Drome, back to Roller Drome, you can't escape the Roller Drome available now as part of your PlayStation Plus subscription. That was originally a PlayStation and PC exclusive. Mm. But I know people who only have Xboxes. So when it yeah. came to Game Pass, I went to them and I'm like, you need to go to Xbox and get this game right now. It is so good. It's also easy to lose touch. Like we love video games talk about them all the time and yeah. everybody who's watching this probably has multiple consoles but most people have one yeah because they're expensive they're expensive and yeah. you don't really need more than one mm. usually people weigh their options like what games are on my playstation yeah. that i want to play and what games are on xbox that i want to play and they weigh which ones got the more games that they want to play and they buy that one yeah um so most people are getting playstation yeah. because there's more exclusives on playstation so if a game is coming out or if Starfield ends up coming out for PlayStation, that's great. More people get to play Starfield. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's nothing to be upset about. You're not being betrayed. 